Hey Vision Chasers, this is Dr. Bird here with another social studies lesson for you today. I do apologize, it's been a while since I posted and that's because on December 3rd, 2014, my beautiful wife gave birth to our two children, as you can see here on your screen, Gavin and Gianna. Gavin and Gianna, they were born, Gianna was born at 9.30 at night and Gavin was born only nine minutes later at 9.39 and so all are healthy. Uh, it's just, uh, it's been a lot of work uh, taking care of all their needs and and getting them sleep to sleep. And so definitely I'm, I'm sleep deprived, but I'm here, I'm a trooper, I'm here for you. And so let's get into today's lesson. So imagine that your teacher is arrested. Now some of you are saying, oh gosh, I'd love that. I got a test tomorrow and I'm not ready. So, <laughs> so imagine your teacher is arrested for teaching. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Well, it actually happened in 1925. So let's find out about it. John Thomas Scopes was actually arrested for teaching. Now you're wondering, what did he teach? Well, what he was teaching was the theory of evolution. And evolution is the exact opposite of the Bible. Evolution states that man evolved from monkeys. Now, the particular law that John Scopes violated was the Butler Act. Now, the Butler Act banned teaching of any kind that went against the Bible. Now, the Bible details man's creation from the very voice of God. God spoke man into existence. And that's also called creationism. So it was determined that Mr. Scopes was teaching evolution and therefore he was breaking the law. Now, it's an interesting point that this was actually premeditated. He was recruited by the American Civil Liberties Union to actually break the law and test the law in the court system. Now, the reason the, the ACLU, for short, did this was because they were against the law and they wanted everyone to see that this was a, a bad discriminatory law and therefore against the Constitution. Now, the trial was just simply a circus. There were people from all around the world coming to this small town of Dayton, Tennessee to see what would happen in this trial. It attracted attention from people around the world and it was then, it was called the trial of the century. Everybody knew about it. It would be the first ever live broadcast of a trial. So that just lets you know how curious people were to know about this trial. Hundreds of reporters filled the courthouse during the hot summer of 1925. And it actually got so hot inside the courthouse that the judge moved the court proceedings outside. Now, fortunately, this was a really good thing for the economy of Dayton, Tennessee. Local residents sold souvenirs, they sold food, they sold memorabilia to people who came from out of town to witness the trial of the century. So in short, this was about the Bible versus the theory of evolution. Everybody wanted to see what was going to happen. Now, the end of this trial brought entertainment for everyone as the two lawyers in this case went against each other in a verbal war of words. Now, the lawyer for John Scopes was William Jennings Bryan, and he was a former candidate for presidency of the United States. He agreed to take this case because he believed that the, he believed in the Bible, he was a Christian, and he believed that the theory of evolution was wrong to teach children. And he also believed that the teaching of the theory of evolution posed the danger to society. Now the lawyer for the state, the prosecuting attorney was Clarence Darrow. And he was highly thought of and he had a, a sharp mind as well. Now this was a highly unusual move as William Jennings Bryan and Clarence Darrow squared off when Clarence Darrow called William Jennings Bryan to take the stand. In short, Mr. Darrow challenged Mr. Bryan's belief in the Bible and Mr. Bryan, he defended as best he could. And so both sides believed that they had won the argument, but in the end, Scopes would be found guilty and fined a hundred dollars and the Butler Act would stand for another 42 years. Now, what's interesting is that in Dayton, Tennessee, they hold a John Scopes trial and festival, and, and there's a play that goes along with it as well. And as I was doing research for this post, I came across that, and I think that that would be very interesting. And so I encourage you, if you're in the area or spring break, 
summer break, encourage your parents to go down there and check that out. I think it'd be really interesting. I know that I definitely want to make an effort to get down there possibly during the summer. Well, that's the lesson for today. Please check the Vision Chasers website for more tips and tools to help you as you chase your vision of success. Also, please feel free to download the worksheet that goes along with this video to better help you understand the trial of the century, the John Scopes trial. Well, until we meet again, thanks so much for watching. Keep chasing the vision. Bye.